The Minnesota Twins had two baseball games today. Unfortunately, it was not a good day for them. They lost one, and they tied one. And they were not exciting. <laughs> so we're going to skip over them a little bit. We're going to go through the games very roughly, very quickly. And then I have some more news to talk to you about, about some roster moves that happened today with the Twins that have some impact on the season. So let's jump into game number one. We'll start with the game they tied against the Pirates. They tied 2-2. Two to two. And like I said, this is not an exciting game. During the regular season, we would be able to spend more time on where did the Twins go wrong or who actually did well in this game. But during the preseason, spring training, nothing really matters and uh, who really cares like what actually happens. Like I've said this so many times, but the only thing I do want to note in this game is that it was a lineup that would be on an everyday roster, I would say. I mean, you're still missing Correa, Buxton, Polanco, Kirilov. Like, you're still missing those guys. You're putting these guys who are playing in situations that they probably won't be in during the regular season. I don't think Kepler is going to lead off. I don't think Miranda will ever bat second. Those kind of situations. But good to learn, of course, in spring training and see how they can do in different instances that might rarely come up in the regular season that they might be a little bit more prepared for, right? But to score two runs with a lineup like this is not ideal. But again, it's spring training. Who really cares? They only get half a game anyway before being pulled. So, guys who did well in this game, Michael A. Taylor had two doubles, scored a run. Kyle Farmer had a hit, one for one today, with a run. Also had a walk. He had a pretty good day. And uh, Kepler had an RBI. And Larnack had an RBI. That was it. That was really it. And, uh, I mean... From a hitting perspective, of course, you want to see guys doing better than that. You don't want to see Miranda go 0 for 3 or Gallo go 0 for 3 or Solano go 0 for 3. I mean, those guys are all in the middle of that lineup there. But, like I said, there's not much you can really do. Just, you move on. And let's talk about one good thing that happened. It was the pitching. At least Bailey Ober, uh, three innings of work, did not allow a hit, did not allow a run. Did walk one, but struck out one as well. His ERA is still zero. He is fighting for a spot. And that's actually what the headline is in this game, is that Ober is fighting for a spot on that rotation. I've talked about this so many times, but you've got uh, Sonny Gray. You've got Lopez, Maeda, Mali, uh, Ober, Joe Ryan, Louis Varland. You've got seven guys who could be starters, and that's not even including Paddock, who will probably be a starter when he comes back from Tommy John at some point during this season, right? So you've got seven guys who could be a starter. Bailey Ober, I would say, is not in that top five, right? Especially when you went out and picked up a uh, Pablo Lopez this offseason. So it's going to be interesting to see what they do, but for him to have another good outing, I think he at least gets the chance. And the good thing is, at least at the start of the season, I would expect the Twins to go with a six-man rotation. So there is hope for Ober, but you'll have to let me know what your thoughts are in the comments uh, because I don't know what to do with Ober exactly. But two other guys I want to talk about quickly are Dennis Santana. He threw an inning, did not give up a run, did a walk one, but that's okay. He's had a very good couple of outings. That's impressive. Uh, he needs those. <laughs> and he has not had those to at least start the season or like the first two or three starts that he had. So to have two or three starts to follow those, they look good. He looks good. That's what I want to see. McGill still struggles. I mean, McGill is not it. He and Sands are the two guys who I would say they got to figure it out or go somewhere else because he threw an inning, gave up a run, gave up two hits, did strike out two, but his ERA is over 10 in spring training. He's blown two saves this summer or this spring. Something has got to change. Let's go over to the other game. Like I said, there's not a ton to talk about in this game either. Chance Cisco, though, he had a huge day. The Twins lost this game, but he went two for three with a home run, a double, two RBIs. That's really good. He attributed to half of the runs uh, on his own. <laughs> like he attributed to the two double or a double, a home run, two RBI, and obviously the home run, a run himself. So that is half of what the Twins scored by himself, and he will not be, I don't know who that is. He will not be anywhere near the Twins this season, I would only imagine. Like I said, I've never heard of this guy before. Um, he was a second round pick by the Orioles in 2013. Like that tells you where he was, right? 
He was really, really young then, though, so he's 28. He's still got an opportunity to move forward, but again, that's not why we're here. We are here to talk about the bigger names, um, but credit to him who did well today. This was a wild lineup. Uh, you got Lee in there, Walner, Garlic, Lamar, Cisco, like I said, Bechtold, White. I mean, these guys are like the definition of third to fourth string guys, and most of them got you know, experience this season, but are not going to be up here anytime soon. Garlic, Walner, uh, and Lee may be the exceptions in this, uh, but again, good for them to get that experience. That's what's important. Lee went over 3, Walner over 3, Garlic over 3, Lamar over 3. I mean, tons of guys who just did not do well today. Camargo over 3. That is like everybody in the top like five or six. Like Cisco was the only offense today. I don't even know how they scored a couple of the other runs, but really bad game by a team that didn't like <laughs> they this was not a team today. So not much that you can really say there. Uh the second inning was the home run, got the twins out front from Cisco, but that was all they did. They scored two runs in the ninth. Uh, which they seem to do a lot, <laughs> but that got it a little bit closer, I guess. So two really not great games. The Twins are 8-8 eight and eight on the season in spring training with like three ties. What can you do? I think they'll be a lot better during the second half of spring training now. I think that like kind of officially starts today um, as they you know cut guys and, and get that roster put together. So that's what I want to finish talking about in this video for the next two or three minutes is today, Dustin Morse released uh, some roster moves. Option to AAA, the left-hander Brent Hedrick and the infielder Edward Julian. So big names, two guys who I've mentioned on the channel before that definitely have the opportunity, the possibility, probably a really good possibility to be up in the majors at some point this year, if not next year, and actually make an impact. They're the guys who you know, are kind of next up. I would say maybe not in the pipeline. I know Edward Julian is, but for guys who are in line, especially for Hedrick, who we don't have another lefty in the bullpen, like that's gonna be him, right? So the next guy's up. They were optioned to AAA today. Also reassigned to minor league camps were Blaine Enlow, Cody Larson, Patrick Murphy, Austin Schulfer, and Aaron Sabato. That one kinda stinks a little bit, but I know Aaron, I want Sabato to do well. I did see him in 2019, and maybe that's why I just have a, such an attachment to him, but like, He's probably going to be a Miguel Sano, Logan Morrison, CJ Crone kind of player. And that's not what the Twins need, especially in this kind of new era of baseball with bigger bases and pitch clock and all that kind of stuff that changes the, the way that the game is played. But Edward Julian, on the other hand, he could be one of those players that really thrives in that kind of situation, especially like he hit a home run against, uh, oh gosh, I don't know who it was against, but for Team Canada in the World Baseball Classic like two days ago. So he's got pop, he's got a good glove, he's fast like he's young like he's he's the next guy up and I think he'll get an opportunity at some point this year it really depends on how Royce Lewis does I believe and where they want to put Brooks Lee I think Brooks Lee will have an opportunity before Julian but I don't know I don't know I, that's maybe a great question for you guys where do you see those two because they're like one and number four in the pipeline Royce Lewis is number two. Like, you've got guys. They won't compete against each other because one's a second baseman. I don't think Julian will ever play third. Brooks Lee will probably play third. I don't know. I really don't know what's going to happen with that. So that's a great question to ask you guys. But it pretty much does solidify who are the left-handed pitchers. Let's start there. It will be um, Moran, who will be a lefty, and Thielbar will be a lefty. That's it. Like I said, Brent Hedrick was the only other guy on the roster, on the 40-man roster, that is a left-handed pitcher, and he will not start. So that is crazy that he was sent to the minors, I think, this early. I think there's still a lot of time in spring training, but they have to cut the roster, I guess. So for him to get cut this early, I think, is a little bit of a surprise. But he will have an opportunity this year based on what the Twins have already. Unless they go out and get, you know, I don't know if Brad Hand is signed anywhere, Unless they go get somebody like that or make a trade, he just doesn't have a spot right now, but he will be up here soon. And like I said, this also solidifies the five-man infield for the Twins, and that is a little bit misleading. I'll tell you in a second. Royce Lewis, of course, is on 
the IL. Now Julian is down in the minors. So you've got Correa at short. He's the, the standout guy. You've got Polanco up the middle at second. I don't know what they'll do with him. I hope they trade him, but I don't think so just because he's so cheap and he's a switch hitter. So those two guys are pretty much locks. They're the only two players that pretty much play those positions. Solano will move around. He'll be kind of the designated bench player, I believe, which puts Kyle Farmer at third and Jose Miranda at first. Of course, Miranda being a righty at first still opens up the door for somebody like Joey Gallo to play first when the matchups are right. And also, Kirilov can play first, but I still haven't heard a lot of word about if he's going to be completely ready to go and healthy at the beginning of the season or how long his injury for his wrist is going to take. But they also want to put Nick Gordon at first base at some point this year. I already mentioned that at one point or another. But Nick Gordon, Kirilov can both play the infield. Kirilov first. Nick Gordon can play second and a little shortstop if he needs to. So those five infielders are going to be... Still rotated, but just not as much. Pretty solidified there. But uh, with the DH spot open, you'll still have Miranda because he can't really play third yet with his injury. You'll have him at first. And then I would assume one of the outfielders because there's still like six or seven outfielders. They will be in the DH and rotate that way. So roster update, lineup update, and the two games today. Exciting times to be a Twins fan, though. I tell you what, like the, things are starting to take shape, and that's what's really good because now we'll start to see as they get refined and confirmed like how good the Twins are going to be. Let's put Buxton in there now. Let's get these guys going. But uh, it's an exciting time to be a Twins fan. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks so much for watching. We will see you tomorrow. And make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you did. Enjoy. Peace out.